Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Megan, and this is Sophia. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, she sees herself. <laughs> is that funny? Today, I wanted to do Sophia's 10 month update. <laughs> She is just growing and changing so much and I missed her nine month update so it's going to be very much different from her last one. Yeah. So let's just get right into this because she's a little bit fussy today and I don't know how long I'll have to work on this. So she is 18 pounds, just around 18 pounds now. And she's a petite little girl. <laughs> ah. ah. <laughs> oh, you're trouble. <laughs> She has four teeth now, and on her last one, she was just barely getting the first and the second one, I think. She gets them in pairs, so she got the first two both in one night, and she got the second two both in one night. And the second two were so rough, but I will get to that later. Do you have a necklace? Yeah. She's also getting more hair, and you can tell that it's getting longer in the right lighting. It kind of, yeah. It kind of sticks up and it's so, so cute. She stands all the time. She's constantly just standing up in the middle of the room, practicing. <laughs> she practices walking, holding onto something. She just holds onto the couch and like just walks right back and forth. She's doing a lot of practicing, but she hasn't actually walked by herself yet. <laughs> she crawls super fast, like it is crazy. <laughs> it's so funny to watch. She also does this funny little spinning thing where she sits down and she uses one leg to push herself around in a circle. <laughs> so it's, it's the funniest thing to watch her play because she'll be holding a toy and sitting and just spinning in circles, looking at it and talking to herself. Yeah, she's very cute. <laughs> You're very distracting. No one's even going to listen to what I'm saying. She is sleeping perfectly. I think we finally have sleep down for the most part. I'm sure we'll have a couple little regressions, but for the most part, she sleeps through the night. She sleeps all the way through the night. She doesn't need to eat during the night anymore, so I don't have to nurse her or heat up any bottles, which is fantastic. So even if she does wake up, I pretty much never come in here and check on her, and because I know she'll just go back to sleep after a little jabbering. She's getting a lot more independent. She's getting a lot better at just going off and playing by herself, which is really nice because it's canning season right now and I don't know what I would do if she wasn't independent at all. <laughs> she likes to just go explore and climb under the chairs and get stuck under them, but she figures out how to get herself free. She's very smart. She likes to chase the cats around. She goes and finds little crumbs on the floor. She's very adventurous and I've had to do a lot of just letting go and chilling out. She will not die if she eats crumbs and I just need to be a little bit more relaxed. So lately I've been a lot better about letting her practice exploring and learning and she's just been growing and advancing in leaps and bounds and I think that me letting go a lot is allowing her to just learn easier. Some days she does just need mama though. Off and on she's she's independent and then the next day she just really needs me to hold her a lot, which is fine. I know she's gonna go through a lot of phases. Today's been kind of weird where this morning she was super independent and good and then after she woke up from her first nap, she's been really needing me and if I put her down, she cries a lot. So I don't know if she's her teeth hurt or what, but I'm just rolling with it and letting her be held and I'm not gonna get as much done as I thought I would, but that is okay. Here you go. I've got some green beans in here that I'm feeding her <laughs> to keep her quiet. She loves talking to herself while she plays. It is the cutest thing. She doesn't say like real words yet, but she jabbers so much and it's so cute. You can really tell that she's getting into her own little world and really getting interested in what she's playing with when she starts like t jabbering and talking to herself a lot. She still loves our kitties. I think I've talked about some of this in some of her other updates, but she loves animals. She loves our dog but she loves especially one of our kitties. Her name is Bilbo. We have four cats, but she loves one in particular. <laughs> and her and this cat can just play for hours. Sophia will be crawling along the floor and the cat will walk in front of her and brush her tail up against her face and Sophia will kind of freak out and sit back 
and start crawling again and the cat will rev up against her the other way <laughs> it's just the funniest thing and then Sophia finally gets frustrated and grabs her tail and like pulls on it and the cat makes this noise and then Sophia gets scared it's like oh they're just like constantly playing and <laughs> it's kind of handy for me because the cat keeps her very entertaining for long stretches and it's actually really good because Sophia's learning that she can't be rough with the kitty. She's actually become pretty gentle unless the kitty is really annoying her. She knows that the cat will scratch her if she's really rough with her. And that's in turn made her a lot more gentle with our dog and all of our other cats, so that's been really nice. She is just the sweetest little girl. She she reaches for us. She's been doing that for a little while now, but it's just, oh, it melts your heart. And she calls me mama. She's starting to call her dad dada. <laughs> It's so sweet and she gives little baby kisses where she just pushes up her face against your face and gives you a big slobbery kiss and it's just so sweet. She definitely has a strong sense of stranger danger. She does not like to be held by anyone but me or Luke. She does like one of her cousins and she lets her hold her a lot. But other than that, she doesn't really like other people. Which is fine because we don't really let anyone babysit her. She's never been babysat by anyone but me or Luke. So we're all good if she just wants us. She is officially all done breastfeeding because as you guys know, I'm pregnant and my milk is, is, is gone. It's dried up now. And I actually didn't even know that the last time would be the last time, which is sad, but also kind of a blessing in disguise because then I didn't get all teared up about it and bawling while she was trying to eat. My milk is gone and she's just not interested in trying to make more come out. And she's perfectly happy to have a little bit of her formula. I make her a round milk formula, so it's nice and healthy. She's also eating a ton of solids now. She's eating more. <laughs> she, she is just trying to climb this like a little monkey. She's eating more and more of just stuff that me and Luke eat. So it's really nice when we have a dinner that we can just feed her like whatever's on our plate. It's really handy. My plan is to have her wean from formula by a little over a year. I'd like to have her off the formula by the time the new baby gets here in March because I have to make that formula every 24 hours and it takes me like half an hour to make it and it's just... <laughs> It's gonna be a little harder to keep up with what I have a newborn in the house. So that's my my plan. And she loves solids so much that I don't think it will really be a problem. These last few days, she hasn't really been eating or drinking that much formula anyway, so she might be trying to wean herself. I'm not really sure. But I'm just perfectly happy to give her less formula as she wants less of it and hopefully do it on her terms instead of my terms, because that'll go a lot smoother. But she definitely goes through a lot of phases with food and very often, and I've just really had to learn to roll with it, which has been really difficult for me because I love it when I know for sure, for sure that she's getting enough. There was like a really big stretch, like weeks and weeks where she just ate tons of food and I loved it because I knew that she was getting like more than enough. And then she went through a phase where she ate like a bird and it was hardly anything. And I had a hard time not trying to make her eat it. I didn't, cause that's not, that's, that's bad. And it can make them have issues with wanting to eat food later. But she's just come in and out of phases where she's going through growth spurts or, and then she starts teething and then she doesn't really want to eat cause it hurts. And it's just like constantly changing. And so I, I just offer her food every couple hours and if she doesn't eat it, that's fine. I, I just don't freak out and it's working out fine. She is a healthy little girl. And she won't starve herself, so I just have to keep telling myself that, that she's not going to let herself starve. A couple weeks ago, she had, when she was getting her two top teeth, oh, it was horrible. She cried so much, and she got this terrible teething rash that was just, it just seemed like she was so itchy. She was constantly, like, holding on to our shirts and, like, rubbing her head against it. Like, she was, she had this itch, but she, she didn't really know how to itch it, which has to be so annoying. She also got an ear infection, and so that sucked. <laughs> I actually have a video that went out recently about how to survive teething, which is pretty handy. I will link that one. And I also have one that like just went out probably right before this video about <laughs> home remedies for ear infections. So I will link both of those things in the description box because all that stuff has come super in handy lately with all this stuff that's been going on. But that was a really rough phase for me because when she cries all day and oh, and during that time I had a midwife appointment and my midwife lives an hour away so I had to drive there and she cried the whole way there, the entire appointment and the entire way back. And when stuff like that happens, it just wears on me so much and I just, really have to be focused on not letting myself get down and realizing that it's just a phase and it'll be short and it'll go away. But it's hard to remember that in the moment. But when she's not teething, she still really loves going places. It is fall. Well, it, it just, it's September, but it snowed. 
it should be fall, but we haven't really been going outside a ton lately. <laughs> right before the snow hit, I tried taking her on a walk every day and we'd go on a nice long walk and she just loved it. She loves being outside so much that I'm just gonna have to really bend her up and find ways to still go places in the winter. Cause she just gets so bored when she's in the house all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you're so cute. But I think that's most of everything and she's getting very antsy. <laughs> Hi. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed this update and that you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.